Okay, so today we're going to practice Bernoulli's equation. Um, <clears throat> last video, I believe we ended on um, using Bernoulli's to look at our semester long design problem, but also look at the draining of a pool. Um, this time we're going to look at a draining of a similar kind of object. Um, it's going to be a coffee maker. So I have this cone make coffee maker cone-like coffee maker and it drains out of a hole at the bottom and we're going to predict how long it takes to drain and we're going to do a much more thorough job of it. Okay, so Bernoulli's practice. Let's do a little bit more vocab um, practice first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Bernoulli's equation, we're going to multiply it sorry, we're going to um, multiply it by 1 over rho g um, so that in the end we get pressure over rho g one half v squared over g plus z and you'll notice the z is by itself here so that means that the units on all of the items in this equation are height and they have to be because um, one of the rules of using units is that units have to be homogeneous in an equation so if the units are all in height then um, we can talk about these things with a I don't know what to call it. Uh, all these different sections are called um, different kinds of head. So we have a uh, pressure head, we have a velocity head, and we have an elevation head. And this comes from, um, if you remember our section on manometers, if you take out the velocity because we have a hydrostatic uh, system, and um, you set this equal to a uh, so if this is equal to zero, then this equation becomes the hydrostatic equation. And actually, if you set it, if we, um, you can do it if you set it equal to zero, if you get lucky with all the stuff equaling zero, or if you set it equal to uh, P1 over rho G plus Z1 is equal to P2 over rho G plus Z2. If you solve this um, for P1 minus P2, you get uh, Z1 minus Z2 minus P2 is equal to rho G Z2 minus Z1, which you should recognize as our pressure and height relationship model, right? Um, so people used to use this, use manometers all the time to measure pressure, and they would use manometers to measure the amount of steam pressure in a steam engine. And so if you ever hear somebody say they have a good head of steam, that means that their pressure head is... <laughs> quite high and they're able, if they were a steam engine, let's say, able to um, climb, a, uh, climb a mountain, right? Whatever. I don't know, whatever steam engines used to do. Pump dry wells, or pump dry uh, mines. So, uh, yeah, we have the option of putting everything in terms of units of height. We also have the option of putting everything in terms of units of pressure. Um, if we do that, then this is called our static pressure. This here is called our dynamic pressure. Dynamic pressure. This combined is called our stagnation pressure. And everything, including this, is called our total pressure. Um, note that this amount here is called our stagnation pressure because that is the pressure you will sense if a liquid or fluid comes to a complete rest. Um, and then that can be broken into two different parts, the static pressure and the dynamic pressure. And the dynamic pressure is the amount of pressure due to the um, kinetic energy of the fluid. You'll note, right, this is a V squared times a 
density. So we have a one half m v squared over our volume. Remember, this is essentially our density. So this is a kinetic energy per volume. This is a, a pressure. And then this is a potential energy per volume. So these are all, you could also think of these as energy per volumes, right? Um, and you can think of Bernoulli's as an exchange in energy. So we go from, um, we can take, uh, let's say we have compressed air in a, a, a container with high pressure. We can convert that pressure into either kinetic energy or potential energy. We can either have the fluid leave the, the container at high velocity, or we can have it um, rise up to a certain height, which would be converting it into uh, potential energy. Um, this equation does not include losses, right? Everything has losses, frictional losses, um, viscous losses, and uh, fluid problems. But we'll, we'll, we'll include that later in chapter mm, six, I believe, um, where, we, we, where we talk about the energy equation. Great, so this is some vocab, remember. Um, we can talk about pressure head, elevation head, velocity head, if we put our Bernoulli's equation in, in term, where everything is in terms of uh, height um, or distance. Or we can rearrange it so that everything is in terms of pressure and talk about static pressure, dynamic pressure, stagnation pressure, and total pressure. Static. Cool, so let's get on to a practice problem now. Um, so I have a cone uh, coffee filter uh, which I make coffee with every morning. It's actually an oval shape, but an oval shape is, is quite difficult to figure out the um, cross-section of at any point. So we're going to approximate our oval as a rectangle here. And um, we these are the approximate dimensions of this uh, rectangle. It's about 5 centimeters high from the height of the liquid to the bottom where the hole is. Um, the depth of this thing is about five centimeters. The angle here, I have approximated it as 26.5 degrees for the triangle cross section. And the diameter of the hole that it's leaving is one millimeter. And what I want to know is, uh, because it takes about three filled cones, if you will, to fill up my coffee cup. I have a big coffee cup. Um, how long does it take the cone drip filter to drain? Because I'd like to fill it up, go somewhere else, and then come back right as it's drained and fill it up again because there's nothing more satisfying than timing things perfectly. So we're, um, if we want to answer this question, we need to know what model we need to use. And the question, we can rephrase this question as saying we're relating flow rates and velocities because we're draining something and we have a hole that it's draining through. So we're going to relate the flow rate that's coming out of that hole or velocity in heights, uh, uh, the changing height of this liquid right here. And which model are we going to use? We need velocities, heights, that's going to be Bernoulli's. So let's write down Bernoulli's equation. Um, I'm going to choose the pressure formulation. So P uh, plus P1 plus one half rho, oh, sorry, not rho. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, P1 plus one half rho um, V squared plus g z1 is equal to p2 plus one half rho v2 squared plus g z2. Ah, forgot the rho in front of both of these. Great, so um, we always have to write down our assumptions. So let's write down our assumptions so we can help our graders and our future coworkers. Um, we're gonna assume gauge pressure You'll notice that gauge pressure isn't an assumption, it's an assertion, right? We're asserting ga gauge pressure. Every pressure we, we write down is the absolute pressure minus a certain fixed amount, right? The assumptions, what I want you guys to get in the habit of is writing down everything that might be pertinent to somebody else who's looking over your work. And the fact that you're using gauge pressure is pertinent to them. So we'll call that A, we'll call B, rho is equal to a constant, C, we need this to be steady state, steady flow, and D, um, inviscid. So we know that this is draining and the cross-sectional area is changing, so it's not actually steady flow. But if it's slow enough, it might be okay, because really what we want to do is we want to avoid dynamic forces, right? We want to avoid momentum, changes in momentum becoming important. Um, 
uh, inviscid flow, not a great assumption, but we have a fairly large container with a small hole, but not a long tube that it's draining through, so inviscid actually might be a decent assumption here. Great, and obviously we're draining water through this, so rho is equal to a constant. Cool, so uh, let's draw our streamline. Anytime we use Bernoulli's, we have to draw a streamline. This is just like F equals MA. Every time you use uh, some of the forces equal to mass times acceleration, you have to have a free body diagram in order to, um, one, communicate to other people how you're using some of the forces equal to mass times acceleration, but also just to help yourself do it right. Bernoulli's, we need to have a streamline that we're using this along. And I'm going to choose this streamline here where we start at the top one and go to the bottom two and that bottom is just outside of the, the opening of the hole okay we need to draw a coordinate system because whoever made this problem didn't draw it they were lazy that was that was past that was past craig um so we're going to do it here and we're going to make point two equal to zero so if we do that we can actually simplify bernoulli's a tremendous amount this is zero um, B2 is not zero. P2 is zero, though, because of gauge pressure, A. Uh, P1 is equal to zero because of gauge pressure, A. Z1 is not equal to zero. That's actually equal to the height, so we're going to redefine that as H. Um, we don't know V1, and we don't know V2. So we have two unknowns in this equation. Um, and we're, we're going to try to solve for V as a function of height eventually. So height is not really an unknown here, but we do not know V1 and V2, which means we need another equation. Luckily, we have conservation of mass, 2, oops, use the right color here, 2. We have V1, A1 is equal to V2, A2, right? So we know A2 but we don't know A1 and we don't know V2 and we don't know V1. So let's let's try to get V uh, the area here. So equation three is going to be uh, our function of our area as a function of height. Because right, we're trying to get everything in terms of height here. Because we're trying to solve for when the height is equal to zero. So that means we need to have everything be a function of height. So we can get the cross-sectional area one in terms of our height because uh, A1 is going to be equal to, and A1 is this area here, right? That's A1. A1. A1 is going to be equal to our height, H, times the, we want this, uh, this is our height, but we want this length here, so that's the tangent of theta times the tangent of theta. Okay, times two, because there's two of them. One, two, so two. And then finally times B, which is the depth into the page. And that gives us the area of that rectangle. And it's in, it's in, and it's in our H, it's in our height, which is great. So let's combine all three of these. Um, well, let's, uh, let's, let's do two plus three first. Two plus three into four, equation four. And we're gonna say that V1 times 2 HB times the tangent of theta is equal to A2 V2. And we're going to solve we're, we're going to solve for V1 and plug it in because we don't actually care about actually we're going to solve for V2 and plug it in. Sorry, that's my bad. Um, but we're going to do one quick change first. And that is Remember when we talked about the pool problem, we talked about how the speed that the liquid is leaving is changing with time. And anytime something is changing with time, you're going to probably have to do an integral, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to change this equation. V1 is the velocity of this surface here, this surface here. And that is just our change in h with time, right? So 4 to 5 gives us dh dt, which is our change in h with time, which is our v1, times 2hb tangent of theta is equal to a2 v2. And actually, let's, let's do this right now. Let's divide by a2 here and say that v2 is equal to this. Great. So now,
<laughs> now we can plug this in, right? So um, let's do 1 plus 5 into 6. 1 plus 5 into 6, and we get that um, 1 half rho, and we're plugging in for V1. So V1, remember, is dh dt squared plus rho g times h is equal to, and now we're going to plug in for V1, we're going to plug in, sorry, for V2, we're going to plug in this expression right here. So we get uh, 1 half rho 2h um, b tangent of theta over a2 times dh dt, all of that squared. Okay, so now we can take equation 6. Oh, sorry about that. Now we can take equation 6, convert it into equation 7, and we can say that we're going to solve for dh dt because eventually we need to separate and integrate this equation, right? Um, let's note first though that we can cancel all of our rows. This becomes a 2 because we can get rid of the 1 half here. Um, and we can combine these two terms uh, here and we're going to do that right now. So uh, 2gh is equal to dh uh, let's, dt squared, let's write it like that, times 1 minus, uh, oh, sorry, we got that wrong. Not 1 minus, it's 2hb tangent of theta divided by a2 minus 1. Great, and that's also square, squared. So let's take the square root of both sides. And then we're going to say, now we're going to separate and integrate. So equation 7 to equation 8 is uh, dt is equal to 2hb tangent of theta divided by the square root of 2gh a2 minus 1 over the square root of 2gh all of that times dh. Now that is not fun to integrate um, but we can do it so we're going to integrate this Um, equation 8 to equation 9 we get that delta t is equal to the integral of uh, we can pull 1 over the square root of 2 square root of 2 g out and we can integrate 2 b h to the 1 half tangent of theta over a2 minus h to the one-half dh, which, if we integrate it, gives us um, delta t is equal to 1 over square root of 2g, 4 thirds, h max, we're going to integrate this from 0 to h max, h max to the 3 halves tangent of theta b over a2 plus 2h max to the 1 half. So, the question I have for you is, is this a conservative estimate? Is this a conservative estimate? So if we scroll up, let's talk about the assumptions we made. We've taken a drip coffee maker, which will have coffee grounds in it. It will have a paper filter. I don't know if I mentioned the paper filter, but the paper filter basically lines this whole thing. And we've, um, and we've simplified it to a like a trough, a triangular cross-section trough that drains out through a hole at the bottom. And um, 
So, um, remember, uh, a conservative estimate is an estimate that if it's wrong, we're happy, right? So remember, I want to get back before this is empty so that I can refill it. So I will be happy if my um, estimate is shorter than what's actual actually going to happen, right? And so I'm going to let you pause now and, and tell me, is our estimate going to be shorter or longer than what this, short, this estimate right here, which I've handily plotted here? Um, I don't know why I did it this way. It's a little bit weird, but you can see that H goes down basically like this. I had it count down. It's, it's weird, but this is the this is the height versus time. So um, it goes down like that. Um, this is um, so this is predicting that after uh, about a hundred seconds, this will this will empty. Is that a conservative estimate or not? All right. Pause the video. Debate it with your friends. Debate it with yourself. That could get fun. Come back. Okay. Um, I would say, yes, this is a conservative estimate because this will predict that the fluid will drain faster than it actually will because in reality, there's going to be all kinds of uh, coffee grounds in here. There's a paper filter that the water has to pass through before it passes through the hole. And all of those are going to add viscous losses to our system. They're going to slow down our fluid. They're going to suck up energy. Remember how we said Bernoulli's is an energy exchange equation just a little bit while ago? Um, it's going to take this height energy that we have in the beginning, and it's going to, instead of converting it into velocity at the exit, it's going to shunt it into losses. Um, because all the little coffee grains are close together, right? And so um, remember that our, our shear stress is proportional to... Um, our velocity divided by a length perpendicular to that velocity. So if our fluid is coming through our coffee grains like this, the the distance between that it has to pass through is very small. So our, our viscous losses will be quite high through the coffee grains. Um, so I would say yes, this is a conservative estimate. Um, I have tested this. Oh, wow, I don't know why I added two S's there. You can add that to your list of stupid words that I've been able to misspell. Um, this is a conservative estimate. However, I have tested this, and it turns out that this thing drains in about uh, 45 seconds. 45 seconds. I think the reason this drains so much faster than this one is two reasons. One, um, when the cross-section is oval... Let's draw our oval cross section here. Um, we're missing volume, right? So it's going to drain faster than it normally would. And the other reason is, is when this is full of coffee grounds down here at the bottom, um, it's also missing volume. So it's going to drain faster than it, it normally would because of the coffee grounds. And both of those can overcome the fact that we have uh, additional viscous losses that we haven't taken into account. So all that to say is, I would have initially guessed that this would have been a conservative estimate, but it is not a conservative estimate because our geometry assumptions were wrong. And this is one of the things that makes engineering so tricky is you have to be so careful about everything you do. Um, and this is true even when you're doing computational work. Everything you make is an approximation of real life, right? If you're doing uh, finite element stress analysis on something, you're approximating the shape of, of that object in your computer and you're approximating the material properties. And let's be clear, um, the models that predict the behavior with respect to stress. And, um, so uh, everything is an approximation. You have to be really careful about how you approximate things because that's absolutely going to affect your results, sometimes more than the accuracy of the model that you're actually using. Because our model was was probably more accurate than we thought. It's just we, we really screwed up the, the geometry here. Great. So the next little uh, thing video is going to be a quiz, not quiz, on um, using a, a pitot tube to measure velocity. Um, and then after that, we'll do a second video, or well, another video, where we, we do two additional problems where we measure, um, we talk about the pressure on a wing and uh, flow measurement in pipes. Great.